Uh, Steve, let's look forward to um, the Cotton Bowl and uh, what you told me off camera was uh, the most exciting game that you've seen in person and probably the second uh, best game uh, to that Clemson Ohio State affair uh, with Memphis. Um, really giving Penn State a game until late. And then that Penn State rushing attack really took hold in their dominance along the line of scrimmage in the last five minutes or so. Two things that I thought would happen going into the game did. Penn State dominates the line of scrimmage and Memphis pulls what Minnesota did against Penn State and really exposes that secondary. Memphis put 479 passing yards, 454 belonging to quarterback Brady White, a career high for somebody who puts up great numbers every single week. He just tore up Penn State secondary early on in the game, getting those 40, lots of 40 yard passes to DeMonte Coxie and Quindarian Jones early in the game to really expose Penn State secondary in the early going. But in the end, Penn State's physicality and their dominance of the line of scrimmage and Micah Parsons were too much ha to handle for the Memphis Tigers. Micah Parsons had his name written all over the game. One of the most impressive stat lines you'll see. I think he had 14 tackles. To Forcing, uh, wrapping up Brady White in the backfield and forcing the ball into the hands of Garrett Taylor, the safety who returned it for a touchdown to put Penn State up by two possessions in the second half when Memphis was already coming back and had a chance to take the lead. So I was really impressed with Micah Parsons' effort in that one. Going into next year in college football, he might be the best defensive player. He could be next year's Chase Young, garner some Heisman votes, all of that. So keep your eye on Micah Parsons. Other things to note from that game, Journey Brown put up a Saquon Barkley-like performance. In fact, it was better than anything that any Penn State running back in history has done in a bowl. He had 203 rushing yards on the ground. He had that run in the first quarter, Penn State's first scoring drive, where he looked like Marshawn Lynch. He carried the entire city of Memphis. Several Memphis defenders tried to tackle him. He trucked them through to the end zone, scored there. Later, he gets a gaping hole from his offensive line. He told us post-game that even the – Cotton Bowl's good year. Blimp could fit through that, and it probably could. 56 yards to the house. And as long as Penn State kept running throughout the game, they were dominating. They had five rushing touchdowns, two to Journey Brown, and then three others to some of their other running backs that were making impacts. Two to Noah Kane, one to Devin Ford. And I'd be remiss to not even mention Ricky Slade, who was getting big gains through and through throughout the game. So Penn State really dominated the line of scrimmage. They, they didn't even really need to pass that much. I think Sean Clifford only had 11 completions, mainly screens to KJ Hamler and Pat Fryermuth, who were gaining yards after the catch. But Penn State just won this one in the trenches. The Nittany Lions, uh, they had a pretty good, pretty good game, not really turning the ball over much, except for that one interception to Austin Hall when Memphis almost came back in the third quarter. But I think this is a statement, remarkable win for James Franklin and his program, who gets their second New Year's Six Bowl win in three years. That follows up a time span from 2012 to 2015, where the Penn State Nittany Lions weren't even ranked once. So I think Saturday's performance of the Cotton Bowl is just a testament to how far this program's resurged under James Franklin. At 11-2, and two, Penn State should finish uh, the final ranking somewhere between 5 and 10. Memphis, of course, at 12-2, and two, the class of the group of five teams this year. Cincinnati in play right now as we speak, throttling Boston College. Of course, Memphis got the two wins against the Bearcats head-to-head -to, -head to win uh, the American Conference. And again, they should finish uh, in fine fashion. They gave Penn State quite the fight despite a 14-point loss. Steve Helwick on the line, uh, helping us break down bowls across America as he is covered. What was the count, Steve? Been to five, covered three. Well, I've covered eight, eight total now, uh, seven different ones, but I've been to five this season. Good stuff. Steve, we appreciate you stopping by. And of course, uh, we will give you a call here very soon to start our previews and uh, projections for spring uh, 2020. Sounds good.